Josh, why don't you uh, take us through evaluating a deal because you live and breathe this every day. I do. So there are a couple of things to think about uh, in, in this. Really want to start with kind of what, what does the market say, right? Because the the most common question that we're asked is, how do, how do you value a company? And so typically what you're going to see is that companies are valued effectively one of two ways. Uh, the first is off of a, uh, at least industry standard, what is referenced, is off of a top line revenue number. So property management revenue multiple, and then an EBITDA multiple. So those are in the industry, two most common ways that these businesses are valued. Uh, on the EBITDA multiple, EBITDA for those unfamiliar with that, and we'll talk about a couple of uh, things that uh, some of you may be very familiar with, some of you may be unfamiliar with, and so we'll try to provide explanations as we go uh, through the process. EBITDA stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And so it's a profitability metric that uh, most uh, large, uh, larger businesses use to uh, to reveal their profitability. And it's one of the ways that uh, buyers in this industry use to evaluate companies or to provide valuation for companies. So industry, what's happening is we're seeing multiples on average anywhere between as, as low as less than one times top line revenue to as much as two times revenue on the top line. Uh, EBITDA multiples, I've heard people talk about it as low as two to two and a half times, all the way up to as much as 10 times is, is what we've heard people say. And so in that, you know, those are, those can be two very different uh, extremes that you're operating in, you know, one to two times of your revenue uh, is a pretty wide gap on a million dollar company. That's the difference of a million dollars. I think that's pretty consequential. But one of the things to, to point out is that on deals that go uh, as high as two times, they're usually going to be a an overwhelming amount of restrictions. I wouldn't say overwhelming. There are going to be a significant amount of restrictions that are going to be involved in that. Uh, one of those things, and we'll get into this a little bit more, they're going to have a lot of clawbacks. It may come only as a part of a seller finance deal that is carried over a very long term. It may require the seller to roll equity into the company. There could be a number of stipulations that come out of these. Uh, but the one thing that I want to point out in this in this valuation is you can pay what you want to pay there is no rule that says that you can't pay two and a half three times four times five times uh, a revenue multiple if that's what you wanted to do but it doesn't mean that it's a good deal so if you're going and paying you know one times multiple a one and a half times multiple a two times multiple uh it doesn't mean that just because you're using a top line number uh, if you if you were to find the median of that, a one and a half time, I don't want you to walk away thinking that if you pay one and a half times that that's a good deal because that may be a very a very poor deal. You know, what is your long term strategic interest? Why, why are you buying companies? How many companies do you plan on buying? If it's one, uh, if it's one purchase that you're going to make and that's it then it may not be a big deal for you to pay, you know, a high one or even as much as a two time multiple. Uh, but for the most part, just because you can pay something doesn't mean that it's a good deal. So on average, we're seeing or kind of the industry, uh, the the verbiage that you're going to hear. If you go to these ARPA events, people are going to say you're going to get between one and two times uh, revenue. The reality is the average falls closer to one. The average falls usually between one to one and a half, I would say global average is probably close to one and a quarter. And so it really kind of depends on a number of factors that we'll get into in just a, a moment around what kind of moves that lever, what moves it from a sub one times revenue to all the way up to a two times revenue. What are some of those things that could happen that would require you to pay that? But before we go there, I want to address the other side of that, which is the EBITDA valuation. So on an EBITDA valuation, you're effectively, it's not exactly the same as your NOI, but you're effectively taking your net income um, and you're multiplying that out uh, by two to 10 times. And a lot of people get confused around this, you know, two to 10 times, uh, you know, EBITDA. So let's say, let's say that uh, you have two different options. One buyer comes in 
and they offer you six times EBITDA. And so that's going to sound on the front end like, okay, I'm getting a little bit more than the median, or I'm paying a little bit more than the median. So that sounds right. Another person is going to offer 1.2 times revenue. So those are going to be things that sound very different, but if it's a 20% margin company, which would be a little bit above average, it's the exact same number. So if you're a million dollar company and you're making a 20% margin, so you've got cash flow of $200,000, net profitability coming back into the business, and you're paying six times that number for a business, you're paying 1.2 million. That same million dollar business, if you're paying a 1.2 times revenue, you're paying $1.2 million for the business. So a lot of times what you're going to hear, uh, and it can be valuable as you're talking to potential sellers, right? I mean, because there is a, um, there's an element of this that, you know, is important to the seller. What is the thing that they want to hear? It may be that they have always viewed their business and the value of that based off of net profitability. Well, then you can hand them an offer based off of that. Um, or you can hand them an offer based off the top line revenue. But the truth is you're not actually, you shouldn't be actually valuing the business, just going in and saying, Hey, yeah, I'm going to pay you 1.2 times, or I'm going to pay you 1.5 times. It shouldn't be based off of that. What you should be doing is considering how you can add value into that business. So when you're valuing a business, it's very important that you create your own financial projections, that you get the financial information for that business. And then you pro forma out, you develop a process to see if I were to take this same portfolio and if I were to lay it over the top of my business, what are some of the efficiencies that I'm going to get? What are some of the gains that I'm going to get um, by you know economies of scale as I'm bringing this portfolio on board? It shouldn't just be all about a top line number or an EBITDA number.